Ladies and gentlemen, you're back again, season two, as I've decided to start calling it, of the weekly, semi-weekly, whenever the hell we care to do this, Google Hangouts for the Mod Zoo, and this week, oh crap, I've got Echo coming back out of somewhere here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Josh, you uh, doing that? <laughs> no, I have my mic muted. You sound good to me, though. Oh, all right. We have a, a bad start there, audio-wise, guys. I'm uh, echoing out somewhere. Um... <laughs> Could it be on my end? <laughs> okay, this is a little uh, disconcerting here. Okay. But... No worries, Drew. Um, so this is an episode that I've wanted to do for a really long time um, and just never got around to it. Um, we were going to have uh, Cheapskate join us, but because of the uh, Texas situation also, uh, we're thinking of you, Eel, Eel, who's going through uh, Irma right now. Um, it just didn't work out. But uh, luckily, we've got Josh Sniffin from NFC Systems who uh, is very well versed in using SketchUp Make, which is a free design uh, software that you can get. It's, it's free, gang. And, and if you go to the uh, video description, you'll find the links uh, that we're going to discuss today. And uh, But Josh has been using SketchUp for a while, and he does builds for companies, trade shows, events. He does this full time. So he's going to show us some of the basics and the goal here is to really uh, uh, not make it so intimidating in the idea of designing your own PC case. It's really not that hard if you just apply yourself. Right, Josh? You just need to get out your TI-890s and freshen up on your trigonometry, and you're good to go. Trigonometry, sir. What kind what? of crack are you smoking? Do I have to go to back to school for all this? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Bill, you actually don't, and that's that's the beauty of SketchUp. It's like using a hammer to smash two plates together until they fuse themselves together. It, you, it's not the prettiest tool in the world. It's not the prettiest tool in the world, but it's easy to use, and it's amazing for getting a layout set for your bot mod. So, I figured that's where we'd start. Yeah. So, what are we looking at right here? This creation of yours. Tell us about it. Um, this is a project I did um, about one year ago called Oriel for a friend. And I'm going to build a second one of them. It's not going to look exactly like this. I figured we could start from the kind of the ground up, and I'll show you all the cheat codes <laughs> to making something like this. This is a very simple model. Um, you were very kind to say I'm a SketchUp expert, but I am nowhere near a SketchUp expert. Um, I've actually kind of migrated away from SketchUp, but I still use it for layouts. And when you say layouts, what he means, gang, is that Let's say you're planning a new project and it's going to be a custom liquid loop. And you, well, let's say you're at work. You download SketchUp, if that's allowed, and you can start doing preliminary planning of your layout where you want your radiator, your pump, and all the other components. Um, there's some uh, cases that will show that are out there online that you can download for free and you can actually actually work inside these cases just to kind of get an idea if you're doing you know, either a full tower or mid tower build where you want to lay out things before having to actually go to your workbench or before you've even bought all the stuff. Um, so Josh, this thing is pretty wicked. Uh, you know, you've done, you've done designs like this before and it's like a whole new form factor. It's this vertical tower thing that you do. Have you come up with a name for these? I really haven't. You know, everyone has their own talents in modding. I can't cut. I can't paint. I am, I'm terrible at every aspect of modding, to be honest. But something I do like to do is be original. So I spend a lot of time in SketchUp throwing motherboards and video cards to start with, finding an interesting arrangement for it. And I say, OK, I'm going to build the case around these parts. And that's my design philosophy. I see. Yeah, well, yeah, as, as a manufacturer, to hire you to do a build, design is great because their product is focused front and center. Like say, uh, if you're doing something for Sapphire and you want to show off their new GPU model, I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. It's literally a, a functioning display. 
that's the idea. I want all my pieces to be kind of like sculpture. And it might be hideous sculpture, but <laughs> I want it to be something that's at least unique. <laughs> I won't say it's hideous. It's definitely art. Um, we have all of our uh, fans and followers back in the chat again. Martin and Envious Callan, uh, Boogles McGee, a lot of familiar faces they've discovered that we're on a new channel here. Um, what is your reaction to seeing this build? Um, meanwhile, Josh, give us kind of a, a breakdown of what this build is like. Can you kind of like break it down to the base one motherboard? For this particular build, um, this chassis will support a full ATX board or a micro ATX board, which is what's shown right here. For the build that we're going to do today, I'm going to do a full ATX build. Um, the arrangement actually will support several graphics cards if you want to do a Crossfire SLI. Uh, the radiator, this is, of course, one of those aqua tuning massive radiators. You might want to yeah. shrink this down and use something a little bit thinner. <laughs> uh, <Why>? but the <laughs> <laughs> You've got all the room in the world for it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. But I want to basically just show where, how do you start something like this? Where do you get these components? You don't have to draw them yourself. And yeah. what are the basics? And what are some pitfalls and tips and tricks? And that's, I guess, okay. you want to get started? I don't. Yeah, let's get started. Well, with, first of all, you can download SketchUp right from their website. There's a pro version and a free version. Both versions suck, just so you know. Sorry, I'm sorry to be the one to Why say that. Why do they suck? Why do they suck? <laughs> well, I used to own a pro license, but every time they update, they break all your plugins. And if you don't get new plug, if people stop writing plugins, and this whole program is really plugin heavy, mm. then you're in trouble. And just backwards compatibility is a problem. But if you're just doing layout, it's fine. But if you actually want to design something and take it to a manufacturer, you don't want to use SketchUp. The second I think reason, that is really yeah. the minority of our audience. So I think we're you know, mostly just hobbyists looking to do something for sure. ourselves. But let's say, I'm going to start over here. Um, let's say that you make something in SketchUp and you get the 2D parts because you can take them to a laser or something to go get cut. That's, that's something that a lot of modders do, right? Yeah. You can't actually take your parts in SketchUp make free and export them to DXF. You actually will have to find a plugin that can do it for you, and good luck finding one that's going to work with the free version. The second problem is SketchUp is not a solid or parametric modeling program. It's like basically using an old school video game engine. So the lines are all polylines. Every one of these dots shows where the line segments connect. This line right here, this is not a true arc. This is actually made up of probably 100 line segments. So if you go to get this laser cut, the little machine's going to be going eh, 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 yeah. eh, 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 over and over and over <laughs> and over again. So really the only way if you want to get this cut is to export to DXF, open it up into a real CAD program, and then retrace it all out. But like. luckily, most machine shops that I've found will do that for you, and it's they're not really that expensive. Well, there's going to be a, what we call a threshold fee, and that could be a minimum of 70 bucks. Which actually seventy bucks is a deal today, but yes. um, okay. How about this? You uh, can recommend some three D software other than SketchUp that you could use that people could get online, yes. right? Yes, Fusion three hundred and sixty is a miracle. It's an absolute miracle. CAD was impossible to learn and outrageously expensive, and a few the people at Autodesk could put together a package is complete, absolutely complete. So you can go from three D modeling. You can go to, for mesh modeling if you're like familiar with 3D Studio Max or Maya. You can go to CAM and actually program your machine like I have a CNC right from that program. And then you can render it out. It has a very powerful rendering engine built into it. So okay. Fusion 360 is amazing. The catch is it's there's going to learning curve. It's like a weak learning curve where SketchUp is you download it and you, you, you're ready to rock and roll. Well, any of this software has a huge learning curve because there's people that go to college to learn how to use, you know, engineering software. Absolutely, so, um, absolutely. But yeah. I still use SketchUp as part of my workflow. But I'm going to show you basically what how I, I what I do. I, I arrange parts together, and okay. this is where let's get to the meat and potatoes. The first thing you're going to want to start with, like I said, I like to arrange my parts first, and then build the case around it. And this is the model that you want to use to do it. This is a model. I'm going to show you where to get in a second. That has all your motherboard formats and all your graphics cards formats, and they're actually accurate. This has been modeled in real CAD program and converted to SketchUp and cleaned up in SketchUp. 
And it's a template. It's a template, exactly. And all the holes are perfect. Because what you're going to find while going to different websites, and you can list your, our favorite, our old school favorite, Bill, <laughs> Jess McKean, is that a lot of the components you're going to download there are wildly inaccurate. And you could end up with a, a big problem if you're trying to make something based off of them later on. Yeah, if you're actually going to go and try to get the parts cut by somebody, as Josh was saying, um, there's a couple of sources for SketchUp components out there that are public contributed content. And some of it is accurate, some of it isn't. And there hasn't been like a, like a reliable rating system to know. But Josh has a source here where it is accurate stuff. Yeah, and my first stop is the smallformfactor.net website, which is the forum I'm active in. You have to actually go to the forum to access the resource page. If you click on the resources, there's all sorts of program uh, models that have been converted to SketchUp, which are 100% accurate, including these motherboards. So this is where I would start first and download these resources. There's also all of our cases on here, too. That's another thing that makes you unique as a manufacturer is that you actually have uh, your case designs are available to the public to go on and customize on their own. Yeah, the the big thing with NFC is I want customers to have an easy time customizing and customizing their their chassis. So I'm in the future, my next cases are going to be even released via CAD, so people that can go get them cut up a lot easier than they currently can with with SketchUp. Or get a quote from China. Yeah, if they do that, that'll make me sad. No, don't do that. You'll make my you'll make me cry. Don't do that. <laughs> it actually is pretty sad. Um, there's been at least three people mm. on this forum that have taken my um, design and then changed it a little bit and then <laughs> showed it on other forums. Like, really seriously, you think that that's anyway? Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> that's always going to exist, but. Um... Another thing, though, this community is pretty tight where people will start policing when they catch other people doing that because they're aware of what you do. And then, you know, the intent in sharing it is to kind of like keep people from doing that. And people will police stuff out there, which is a great thing about this community. Sure. So, no, <laughs> you haven't. <laughs> sure. No, one's helped you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no there, there have been several of my friends that have been really great. Um, like I said, I want to share, but I want to give credit where credit's due. And I have to give credit all the time because I steal basically everything. So I oh, guess the difference like, between stealing and giving is that you give credit. But <laughs> yeah, That's true. Well, any type of artist creative community, there's always going to be sharing and inspiration. You know, it's just, that's just the way it is. You know? Okay. So let's say you have, you have this model, which is the amazing starting zone. And I want, I'm going to use ATX this time around. AT wait, so, you don't yeah, do ATX stuff. I know, I know. I'm breaking all the rules just for you, Bill. <laughs> so I'm gonna actually click my ATX board. I'm gonna drag it out. So I'm gonna grab it. It's IO plate as well. That's pretty sweet, though, how this works. Yep. And I'm going to copy this. Control C. Move it over here for now. And delete this. Now, which video card are they referencing? He's they're, it's really care. They care about the ATX specification for the I/O, mm -hmm. the PCIe key. That's what's important. So this is like an NVIDIA reference spec. Yes, this is an ATX reference uh, expansion card. Okay. And full length. I mean, I don't know what that's supposed to mean exactly, but I believe this card is 13 inches. Whoa. Yeah. But we can change that if we need to. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to move over to my model, which I have completely and totally stripped out. And I'm going to paste it in here for right now. Now, I want you guys to notice something. You'll notice that my model is huge, and this model is really, really tiny. This is my first pro trick. In SketchUp, because it's programmed so badly, if you try to work in normal scale dimensions, if you're doing like small curves and stuff, it might actually break your model. But you don't really have to worry about that. All you got to do is scale your model times 10, because that makes it easy to work with in my head. 
and then you can proceed to use nice curves and cuts, and you won't break poor SketchUp's little engine. So there's two ways to approach 3D, and if you guys are level designers like that use Unreal or maybe the IdTech engine, you know this. You can either add or you can subtract. SketchUp is additive. You can actually start right in 3D to make a, a, an object, a geometric object like this square, and then start cutting out from the object if you wanted to. But sometimes I use this method, but I actually prefer to um, draw the lines out and then extrude. I don't know if this is going to work. I didn't actually pre-bake this as much as it looks. <laughs> But SketchUp usually will notice if you cross a lot, yep, and it'll fill it in like that. Mm -hmm. And then we can actually make solid geometry from this by extruding it. And this is typically how I'll end up making a part. So I'll kind of sketch something off. If you're using calipers to measure something, you know, just make a line drawing in 2D, and then I'll extrude. I'm not going to show people how to do this because this is like, simple stuff that they can watch other tutorials for. Um, SketchUp it's themselves have like a library of how to work the program. But let's say today you want to go, and I'll upload this model for you guys afterwards, this uh, mod that I'm doing. You want to download this and start placing components around, because that's really the meat and potatoes, because there's so many fun toys to play with. Hmm. What we should do um, is uh, also share, like with the people that are uh, in the chat are curious about like, how do you do something just basic, ground zero, like if we were to draw out a motherboard plate, you know, just so they have an idea of how the um, access looks in yeah, SketchUp? Yeah, I can make your part for you real quick. If I can oh, find okay. It. Yeah, let's do that. You you cover for me for half a second while I dig through my mess. Sure. Yeah, um, we've got a lot of people in the chat. And, yeah, this is Josh Sniffen from NFC Systems. Um, good to see you. Um, Alex, uh, if you're referring to the 3D model, that's his own that he designed. Now, you guys, in the video description below, you'll find a link where you can download SketchUp, make for free. You just have to uh, register with your email address. And also, there is a link there to a site that's been around for quite a few years, um, scc.jazzmckean.com. And what he did is, um, through the community at BitTech, is he organized people that were working in SketchUp as a collective together to start uh, sharing the components that they've drawn up in SketchUp through his site. So you can go to his site and you'll find, um, now this site's quite a bit old. I think it hasn't been updated since 2012. However, there's a lot of good content in here. If you want to go and start like just playing around with layouts. Um, for example, what I pulled up today because we're going to be getting one in the shop soon to reacquaint myself, is the TJ07 from Silverstone, one of the dun, most dun, dun. iconic towers in our hobby ever. This is the one that Murder Box, which is now Xforma, uses for their uh, cases that they customize. Um, so there's an individual on BitTech that drew this out, and uh, this is accurate. So uh, if you want to actually play, play around with this, um, there's also some cases from uh, Leon Lee, NZXT, and these are all free to download. Once you have SketchUp, you just go to the site and you can download these along with all the different components. Now, again, the site hasn't been updated since 2012, but nonetheless, ATX is still ATX. You can go in there and play around with stuff. So you ready, Josh? I'm ready. I'm, a, I'm absolutely ready. So your little GPU bracket is based on a 120 millimeter fan mount, right? That's right. So if I want to cheat, I can just go grab a fan mount from the internet, right? Go over here. We can use it as a reference. Times times 10. Remember, we can scale everything. So camera front. It's not... And there's two different viewing modes. There's orthopedic and perspective, or parallel projection, I guess SketchUp calls it. You want to be in parallel projection when building your geometry, and you can be in um, 
uh, perspective when you're kind of looking at things and showing it off. There's a bug in SketchUp that if you're inside your model and you are in parallel projection, you won't see anything. You'll be like, what's going on? So you might have to switch to perspective and back out. So this is where I would this is where I would start, and I have your um, your little bracket here. I have a pair of calipers. So what I'm going to do, because I know it's 120 millimeters, draw a triangle on the bottom right hand of my screen. You see the millimeters at the bottom, the little mm -hmm. box of dimensions. Yep. 120. So I'm going to add a zero because I multiply it times 10. Now I have a a flat plane that is. 100, going, to, going to be 120 millimeters by 120 millimeters when we're done. And I like to do 2D, like I said, so I'm going to start measuring this out. SketchUp notices that I want to do this line, and I can actually mimic this at the bottom. If I hold this little corner, go to the bottom, and now I have an identical line. I feel like really retarded while trying to... Uh, talk and do this at the same time. I feel as retarded as I am in real life. A sad day. <laughs> Can erase the little edges. We're getting there. This center section, I'm using digital calipers, is 37 by 108. I'm going to pretty much draw anywhere in here. 370. What did I type in? Yeah, you're right, though, about uh, the cost of um, CAD engineering software is ridiculous. We use Mastercam, and to uh, which version is it? I think it's. I can't remember a version, but the latest version, it was 22000 bucks. 22000 Is that all? <laughs> you know how many cars I could buy for $22,000? <laughs> I, could, I could buy, a, I could start a whole car lot for that much money. <laughs> yeah. If anybody in the chat's used SketchUp uh, and you've done anything or contributed, uh, shared something, let us know. Um, there is also a SketchUp. I posted in the video description a, uh, a library you can download of people that have done computer cases. But those cases really be uh, cautious about relying on for accuracy. I also noticed that there was a lot of people that when the whole computer desk thing took off in our community that were going into SketchUp and creating PC desks. Like crazy, yeah. So what Josh is doing is he's emulating our stage one GPU 120 millimeter fan mount. And the intent behind these, over the last, what, year and a half or so, uh, more case manufacturers are starting to offer vertical mounting for at least one card in their chassis. And I thought, well, what about the older cases? And what about somebody that wants to do something like really ridiculous, like hang their GPU from the ceiling of their chassis? Um, and do it with the minimum amount, minimal amount of tools needed. Um, so stage one does require you to cut out uh, an opening in the back of the grill to allow your video monitor cable to go through. Um, but stage two has, uh, it's the same design, but it has these extension legs so you can actually uh, use it without having to cut a hole for your cable and the cable, there's enough room to uh, allow the cable to pop out the back of the GPU and then uh, go through the legs. Um, and uh, he, the people that have been buying them have been doing some interesting projects. Um, like somebody wanted to just simply uh, add another card to their system for uh, VR as a dedicated VR card. And they didn't want to, uh, uh, apparently they didn't have space or something to just add it to your motherboard slot so they wanted to add it somewhere else in their case so it's been like when I came up with this idea is that I was thinking more like creatively just doing cra crazy stuff but it seems like there's just people that were looking for a specific um, solution to whatever you know type of build they had which is it's been it's been really interesting to hear from them 
uh, and these are these are milled from half inch thick aluminum. Um, so okay, and the reason why I shared this Silverstone is in a couple weeks we're going to have Tony O from Silverstone in our hangout, and we're going to be talking about the development behind the TJ07 full tower. Um, there's apparently a unique story behind it because it was the first ever unibody design chassis. And what I mean by that is that when you look at a TJ7, it has that curved top and bottom. That's because that is all one single piece, like the letter C backwards. Um, and uh, so there was a, quite a development process behind that. And uh, we're going to have Tony on the Hangout. Should be in a couple weeks. Uh, next week's Hangout, we're not going to reveal yet. It's going to be completely unexpected if everything works out. Right, Droog? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Nothing like a good old surprise for him. <laughs> so, Josh, where are you sitting at on this? I'm actually almost done. Okay, cool. With the profile. Um, just an FYI, the screw holes are countersunk for 1032 machine screws, if I recall correctly, 1032 thread. Um, and, you know, when I came up with these, I made them really beefy. Why so big? You know, that's a lot of the complaints when they, people see the video. It's like, but it's so big. Uh well... Have you held a non-reference card over the last year? No Have kidding. you? <laughs> I mean, when those suckers are taking up three slots on the back, that's a <laughs> lot of weight to be putting on anything, let alone you know just the case itself. Because I have actually seen the the little thin extruded aluminum rail in between the oh, yeah. I/O slots. They're twisted and torqued, and that's even with all three of the screws in, spreading the weight out. Oh, and yeah. And so um, a half inch of aluminum, I'm looking at that going, you know, you might want to add another quarter inch just in case. And we've got Mosquito that just joined us. And Mosquito and I looked at um, the new Fractal Design Focus G Mid Tower two weeks ago. And one thing I noticed about it, it's okay. It's a budget case. For some reason, we've been in this loop of budget cases. Um, it's $59, which is a great price. It's got a custom paint finish on it. But you're talking about a much thinner gauge steel. So I recall uh, when I was putting the card in, it was a RX 580, which isn't terribly big. Um, I could see a bit of flex in the PCI slot, uh, uh, that square in the back, a bit of flex in it. And I thought, yeah. You know, just uh, personally would like something a bit with a bit more beef. So, Moss, what are you doing? You're in a different location than normally when you join us. I'm, well, first of all, I have no idea how my audio sounds because I haven't Oh, you tested sound it fine. Okay, yeah, you good. sound fine. I'm just on the other side of the room. Oh, <laughs> um, the other day when Moss came to the shop, um, those of you that subscribe to the channel, like every Thursday we try to do a live overview of a new case. And we'll try to switch it up and do other things too. Moss showed me on his phone that he actually drew up the new Case Labs bullet in SketchUp. Can you share that, Moss, by chance? Uh, if you give me a minute or two. Sure. Which is yours has definitely got to be the first official one that, well, that I've seen. Maybe there's somebody else's. They haven't shared it online yet. Um, I have the bullets behind me. I don't know if you can see it or yeah. not. <laughs> uh, Case Labs, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, is uh, a company in California that makes computer cases in their fabrication shop, which is, besides Josh at NFC, how many U.S.-based computer case manufacturers are there, gang? How about That's a good question for our chat. So far, we gave you two of them, NFC Systems and Case Labs. Who else manufactures PC cases in the United States for our hobby? That's a good Let question. us know in the chat. Yeah, um, I remember there was a lot more. Well, Dennis from Dennis Leach from Danger Den, which Close. they closed several years ago, he was doing it. Yep. Um, Mountain Mods. Mountain Mods? Oh, we can't. Let's not give them away. Oh, what do we get, Bill? Do we win something? <sighs> no, just, just, just uh, shower us with your knowledge. 
Um, there's Chimera Industries. They're going to be releasing the Cerebus and Cerebus X or Cerberus or Cer whatever. I got flack for mispronouncing. It's all Greek to me. Okay. <laughs> Say that again. Who is that? Uh, Chimera Industries. Are you guys, Moss, are you familiar with them? They're, they're a really small indie developer. Is it kind of like a GoFundMe type of Yeah, case? well, they, they were. They were on a Kickstarter, um, but they are launching with uh, me and, I don't know, that might be secret. Might be oh, oh. Oops. <laughs> okay. Uh, Moss, do you, did you find your bullet? Uh, a matter of finding it is not the problem. <laughs> Moss, you've, you've done other designs in SketchUp, though, too, right? Um, oh, yeah, what yeah. advice would you give people that have never used SketchUp before? Um, you just get it and play around with it. It's probably the easiest way to learn anything on it. Mm. Um, One thing I learned uh, in preparation for this Hangout is that there really is no solid good tutorials for what we do in regards to PC and case design, um, there's some really, really bad, they say they're guides, but it's just like some kid playing techno music while he's just <laughs> doing exactly what you mean. Shut up, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> you're mean. <laughs> <laughs> the important thing, I mean, like I said, is to, is to cheat, is to download the right resources to start with. Mm -hmm. And um, we're one more feature away from being done except for the chamfer. And that's this really clever slot you have at the bottom, which I'm a big fan of. That's, oh, that, that's yeah. the cool part. That required cool a special part. bit. Yeah, I, I was pretty impressed that, that your guy could machine this, but I, I looked it up how to do it because I was, I was impressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing that we can't machine. What was it somebody said? There's no way you could machine that. What was it? Uh, what was it? They're wrong, but... Well, it was like water blocks are actually not that hard. Uh, it was something... Oh, um, oh, uh, keycaps for a keyboard. Yeah, we can make them, but is it financially smart to try to make <laughs> aluminum keycaps you know, in the middle? Someone is doing that. Um, I found them. I found online these guys that make like... They're like 200 bucks. For a keycap, <laughs> have you seen like on um Facebook? They there's those rings that they advertise, like little forests, like eco rings, or look like planets. Like you look into the gym and like they've made little rivers and valleys and canyons. No, I haven't seen that. Oh man, that's really cool. But these this company makes keys like that, and if I could spend three hundred grand a keyboard, <laughs> it would be it would be pretty cool. It just doesn't make sense from a production standpoint, though. I mean, right. if you're doing like a one-off exclusive, preferably for somebody as a commission job, I, yeah. But uh, to retail that, yeah, how are those keycaps coming along there? Uh, we got a bunch of other stuff we got to make. Yeah, there's a waiting list on it too, so it's ridiculous. But it, they are pretty cool looking. All right, your your bracket's done. Was that a, was that a good use of my time, Bill? Yeah, what did that take? Like, uh, like 20 minutes or so. That was pretty good. So what you gonna do with it now? I'm going to copy it and put it in my model for, cool. for later. All right. It took 20 minutes. Yeah, oh, now maybe how, 10. How much do I spend in SketchUp? <laughs> That's a scary thought. No kidding. <laughs> it's really easy to burn through a night. Just you sit down, oh, I'm just gonna do this something quick. And next thing you know, you've got like six things quick and you're like, Oh, birds are <laughs> chirping. <laughs> Let's do something useful now, though, now that I've done that, so you at least see how I kind of modeled it terribly. Um, we need to uh, find the motherboard for this so we can arrange the PCIe slots and see where everything's going to sit in our build. That sounds like a good thing to do, right? Yeah. So the motherboard I'm going to use is the Tai Chi X399 from ASRock. Is it ASRock or ASRock? Yeah, Subject subjective. So we're going to do what you're not supposed to do if you're selling renders or something, guys, is we're going to go to our friend Newegg and steal from them. Not really stealing from them. Well, hey, we've already blown one possible NDA. I mean, why not? <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, actually, boy, the Azrock still is working on fatality on stuff. Wow, that's a good that's a good business manager he has. Or at least just still putting his name on it. This is a tweak <laughs> that I must have. Yeah. Look at that. All right, we are going to save the image to my desktop. We're going to go to my desktop. If it'll let me. We're going to look at a bunch of NDA stuff. Don't look at. Don't look at all the. Is that Dynock? No, that's real carbon oh, fiber. I can tell by the deal. edge. That's real deal. All right, so now we have this. Um, texture, right? But it's mm -hmm. much easier for me to open this in Photoshop and make it a PNG than it is to apply a JPEG. So I'm just going to open up my old version of Photoshop, which crashes all the time now. Oh, sounds like you need to build a new rig. It's it's the Photoshop. <laughs> the cloud. I don't want to pay Adobe lots of money per month. I probably need to, but I paid for this one darn it. And it was like $1,200 for the suite. I'm going to make it more rectangly-ish in this area that I want. And I'm going to... There's probably a, a tool for this, isn't there? <laughs> well, with a uh, white-themed motherboard, that's not going to work out so well. Yeah, yeah. Right. not going to work out so well. Just crop it. Still There's as a PNG now. Moss, tell us the, the how you were talking about how people that have drawn up motherboards and SketchUp and how massive the files are. Oh yeah, I've come across some where it's like somebody went just totally nuts, and they must have modeled every little capacitor. And I swear, sometimes even solder points or something, because it's like <laughs> some of these models that I've downloaded for motherboards. It's just these absolutely massive files, and then. SketchUp just chokes on them. It's like, I don't feel like doing anything anymore. Now we can actually make this a texture and apply it, but I don't like to do that because if I change something later, I will break it. We just want just enough so we can start understanding what this board's kind of going to look like. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, what you've done is you've laid it over your template. Right. Mm -hmm. And now we can just put slots where they need to go. Is there some uh, ASRock fans in the chat? I haven't used one of their boards in like 10 years. I have one sitting right next to me at the moment. ITX? Yes, sir. Is that for your bullet build? Probably not. Or 301? Yeah, that's sitting over there. Yeah, my desk is a, it's a, yeah. Hey, speaking of which, Josh. Yep. I'm not yeah. looking at the screen. It's probably oh. great, isn't it? Oh, I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> the anticipation. The anticipation is building, especially since I'm still wasting time in SketchUp. See, thing SketchUp, is it's a thing. The thing is about Mothermore manufacturers is that, I mean, is there like maybe one or two PCB board manufacturers in China that are making them all, right? There was, I knew the name at one point of one of the PCB board manufacturers for motherboards in our industry. I mean, there's Foxconn, which probably makes the majority of everybody's. Foxconn makes, um, I, will, I might get in trouble. No, you won't. Why, well, for mentioning that? The other one was like, it was a sort of a P. Was it Phoenix? Maybe in the chat, let us know. The mother, motherboard manufacturers, the PCB manufacturers. I have a feeling everyone's just watching me, aren't they? <laughs> oh, that's fine. You guys are, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, check in with the chat here. Callan from Envious Mods. I have an old X58 Extreme ASRock Mobile. Yeah, I've got a X58 EVGA board still running. It's been running every day. Great board. Uh, YouTube. 
I have a Mini ITX ASRock Z87 system. Discrete, two of them are ATX, one is micro ATX. Hey, MJC4 Wilton, haven't seen you for a while. He also has an ASRock board. Uh, I have an ASRock board, but there's not many Z97 boards nowadays, and I don't feel need to upgrade from 4790K. I'm a I'm a gigabyte fan. I, I've always liked gigabyte boards. Never had issues with them. No, I have used ASRock a couple of times, and it for me it's the uh, the budget thing. You know, I mean, you have these dreams for wanting to get something in the gigabyte weight class, and you just really can't afford it. Yeah. ASRock makes probably the most high-end stuff now because they're not afraid to experiment. I mean, I really like. I'm not sponsored by them exactly. I'm sponsored by another company who, who's partner with them. Sure. But they make like the mini ITX motherboards. They're impossible. Like the X299, which just came out. Um, I have one of those on order. The X. Uh, the the mini ITX motherboards that are just nuts. Doing two things at the same time. They were the. Do you remember this? Back hmm. in the old Simpron days, AMD Simpron days, they made a dual socket board hmm. for Simpron and for something else. I don't remember what they were, but it was like two different processors from eight socket processors, and they had two sockets on the board. My buddy had one. And he moved up to the... I don't remember all the names of what I'm trying to do this at the same time. But they make, they make kind of cool, weird stuff. I like them. I'm not afraid to do something weird. I remember a board that I had back in the day that it was during the DDR to DDR2 transition, and it had two slots of DDR availability and two slots of DDR2, so you could make the change over. That's interesting. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, Hard. don't you? That was one of those things. Uh, they warned very sternly: do not try to match, you know, mix and match, <laughs> because. You were going, what was it, a 3 volt down to a 1.5 volt or something like that. It, it would have just blown up the board. I'm just adding features to the boards. Who made the uh, the Blood Dragon one? Was that MSI? No, that, that, was, that was Foxconn. Yeah. Wait, wait. Blood Rage was the Foxconn. Oh, Blood Rage, that's it. Yeah, that was a sweet board. With the I know. I always wanted one. I bought one off a friend who bought mm. one off of Travis Jank, who you are familiar with. Does it work? Oh, it worked great. Ah, nice. You had to keep hitting that memory reset button like every time you wanted to boot. But um, I had Intel 939. I had the 920DO, and it was overclocked to 4.2, which is a pretty good for a 920DO on a basic liquid cooling setup. Nowadays, that number just looks sad and pathetic, but... So what you're doing is you're putting your renders, your parts together, um, yeah, building just your to, I can get a better idea how it's going to look. Sure. Moss, were you able to find that bullet case? This isn't even the right socket, but I'm just using it as a... Yeah. All right, I'll give you another tip. This is probably not going to work, so I'm going to give it to you. But I'm going to take this um, JPEG, this PNG, I'm going to lower it behind the motherboard. I really messed that up. And this is my. There's an X ray mode in SketchUp that's supposed to work, but I can never get to work. So if anybody has any ideas on how to actually make it work without selecting the geometry you're trying to work on, like I tried to do this earlier in X-Ray, but did not work at all. So what I usually do is this. I select my motherboard. I go over to the textures. I go over to translucent, which is now something different. Glass and mirrors. And um, I fill it with translucent. That way, whatever I'm sketching on, which is the motherboard, will actually take priority and hold. Because I tried to do it with the X-Ray, and it just ended up putting my points all over the place which was really annoying. Some people were laughing at me in the chat. And if they weren't, they should have been. 
<laughs> we laugh because we love you, dude. All right, see how that one took? So weird. But I like this trick. And then I'm going to split it right here. And then now I can actually have some geometry that matches my motherboard a little bit more. See, Bill, that's what I was describing on Thursday about how you put it behind and then you trace it and then push them or pull, technically, I guess. <laughs> Now I'm going to make this one group because it's good enough to go on my model, which is very handy. So grouping takes all the little different parts and pieces you have and sticks into one model. So if I click anywhere on here, it selects the whole thing. Have you talked about components yet? I have not. So making a component um, is really handy. Like, let's say I wanted three identical video cards, and I want to see how it looked in the model, or if I'd placed a bunch of these in the model earlier. Um, if they were components, any edit I make to the one I have selected will populate throughout the rest of them. Because, so it's a good way of, um, if you have a part, it's, it's, there's I uses for it in SketchUp, but it's more useful in CAD. <laughs> I use it a lot when I'm doing woodworking related stuff. Like if I'm sketching up a table or something and you have four legs on the table that are all identical, they're just turned, you know, 90 yeah, degrees or 180. That way you can see it degrees, it's like, kind of like right. As you, know, you can just doing. use that to edit one thing, and you don't have to worry about editing, you know, the same thing four different times. You just edit on one. Or the other thing that I'll do is I'll, you know, I'll have a model all set up, and then I'll just take one of the components and I'll just duplicate it like three feet beyond where it is in the model, and then I'll make my edits there, and then everything within the model is already updated, and then I'll just delete the one. I like components. Yeah, visualizing what you're doing um, across multiple things. I'll talk about hiding now. Hiding's important. I want to put my motherboard on my motherboard tray that I've made, but the video cards are going to be in the way. So it's going to hard to line up the holes. So to hide something, you select it, and you go Edit, Hide. And if you're a newbie, which I am, you'll end up getting components lost somehow, because if you hide components inside of components, then they'll get lost forever. <laughs> so you have to go to edit, unhide, or view rather, sorry, and then um, hidden geometry. And it will show like the dotted outlines of everything that you've hidden. Mm -hmm. And, and curves. Can, yeah, then you can unhide them. You don't need to remember how to do it, just that that's what happened. You can look up how to do it later. I can type in 90 degrees uh, front. I'm using the mouse instead of the keyboard, which is why it's so slow. So you can actually kind of see what I'm doing rather than keyboard shortcuts. Do you, have you ever had it before where on different computers, all of a sudden SketchUp just decides that none of the keyboard shortcuts are going to work for you? Yes. It's obnoxious. SketchUp. <laughs> It's worth what you pay for it, though. <laughs> unless you bought Pro like me. I was going to say, unless you're running Pro, of course. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm in x-ray mode, so I can line these two holes up, which is really nice. There we go. But x-ray um, mode is not good for like modeling, as we saw earlier. Robert uh, Doxy just came into the chat and said, hey, everyone, this is such a powerful software. I use it when laying out my builds before I build in the case. Yep. That's what SketchUp's really great for, is just preliminary planning out things for free. And you can, uh, you know, before you even buy the hardware and that. Um, there's a lot of people that just like, that I've met over the years that just, they've never actually built the stuff they designed. They just enjoy the process, you know, of designing and play around of stuff. It's like a, it's like a Legos for okay. adults. I can totally, uh, totally understand that. I, I've burned hours on end poking around at this and gotten nothing other than 
just that feeling of, oh, that was cool. Delete it all. I'll do it again tomorrow. Yeah. Um, well, if I if I built all the things that I had modeled in SketchUp, I would be so broke right now. <laughs> oh. uh, MJC Four Wilton says Blender is better. Hashtag. <clears throat> Why is Blender better? Educate us in the chat, MJC. Educate us. We're all listening. Yeah. Blender would certainly be better for doing something like this for like a 3D render. Um, and they probably be better than SketchUp. The reason I like SketchUp is because there's already stuff you can download. There's a huge model library. So you can just go start downloading parts. And you can quickly lay out stuff. You don't have to do any modeling. If you're doing modeling for stuff you're going to cut, then you probably want to use a CAD program. If you're doing it because you want to render something out, Blender's perfect. Yep, to... I agree. It's it's free, and uh, there's a link there. I don't know if it will show up in the chat or not. It did come up. Uh, he says, because Blender looks halfway decent, and I'm biased as I use it for B VFX. Well, and sure. It's awesome for that. Yeah. Really. Uh, but if you want to, like, right now, download something for free, and go to the site that has components, you can st already start playing around, just like I shared that Silverstone TG07 full tower. You know, and it's pretty much the only free software you're going to find components like that that exist already. And I'll point out something that I remember from way back when this really first hit the, uh, hit the hobby, is a lot of people would complain about... Uh, it, uh, as he said, it, the aesthetics of it, it just looks janky and it doesn't feel like it's going to produce anything as good. And yeah, they're right. Absolutely correct. This was meant to get people dipping their toes in, learning the procedures, learning the processes. So that way they could go over to something like AutoCAD, have the an idea of what the process is, not you know, specifically saying that they could sit down and use AutoCAD from the beginning, but they know what the design process feels like and what it looks like throughout. So they have something to build off of instead of just sitting down at one of those programs and having their brain leak out down their sleeve because they've got no idea where to go or how to even begin. We used to on BitTech... Um... We used to host uh, a SketchUp PC case design contest uh, like every six months. And we had done it like I think six or seven different times where uh, everybody would share the progress of their design. Um, and I could actually pull up a video of one of the contest results. Uh, but there has been some really extraordinary builds done over the last 12 years using SketchUp. And it's just a matter of Learning the learning curve, and as Josh says, learning the plugins and the little idiosyncrasy things about it. Um, again, it's uh, it's just free and easy just to get started, and uh, then if you really into it, graduate to something else like the Fusion 360 or Blender, like uh, MJC says. Um, but you gotta apply, regardless of what you do, you gotta apply yourself to learn it. It's like I can't draw a box. I'm just gonna find something else. And no, apply yourself to at least try to learn it. You know. Yeah, it's one of those tools that it's it's pretty simplified in that you know there's a limit to what you can and can't do easily. But most things that you need to do can be done fairly easily with what it has so i mean obviously if you're gonna go ridiculous on certain things you're probably going to be better off in a more cad type program versus this but you know it's always one of those things where it's it's, it's a definitely a good entry level tool and so far i haven't really run into any like you know limitations that would make it so that i would not want to use it anymore yeah, for layouts at least. Um, it's awesome for layouts. It's terrible if you actually want to make something afterwards, in my opinion. You mean because like converting to... Or... Yeah. Yeah. I did it once. I used SketchUp for... Actually, I should see if I can find it. Um, 
I used SketchUp once to make a part for a, well, it was one of my case mods, but eventually it was 3D printed, and it was kind of a pain because you had to design it. I designed it in SketchUp, and then you had to run it through this other program that would convert it to something, and then take that and run it through another program that would do something else to it before they could actually print yeah. anything. And it was like, oh, this is a pain. It is a pain. <laughs> and with SketchUp, it doesn't clean up your lines or anything like that. It's just terrible. Do yeah, that's that's what one of the programs was. Is it would it would check for things like, oh, you didn't close out a line here, so the actual backside of your part has no face. It's like, oh, oops. <laughs> Let's put a radiator in here. Let's find a radiator first. Bill, find me a radiator. Find you a radiator? What through Jez's site? Can I drag and drop the one that I'm looking at in my folder into your screen? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Google's quite that far ahead, unfortunately. There's uh, 30 the different radiators on Jez McKean's site. <laughs> MJC still in the chat going, Blender, Blender. All right. Triangulating is also important for 3D printing, as most printers don't support four vertex faces. Yes. Yes, MJC. Blender's fine, too. I'm not using the program that I'd be using right now. We all have to make sacrifices. These are all 240s. Hey, MJC, if we send you a link to join us, do you have some uh, PC computer case designs you could share with us that you've done? There's dead air in the conversation, guys. What's going on here? Womp, womp, womp. Well, we're just fascinated by your process, sir. You're looking at my screen? I'm looking for radiators on the internet. <laughs> oh, you've been oh, okay. featured for the last Chris half hour. Chris is showing something now. What do we got, Moss? This is the bullet that uh, Bill kept asking for. Yes. Now, there is three different sizes of the Case Labs bullet. Which one is this? Take a guess. The biggest one. <laughs> 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 I was showing the back of the case. It's an ITX because it's only got the two PCI slots. But yeah, that was, I don't know why I decided to go that far with it. Like really, I, you know, I probably could have just, you know, done one of these sorts of things. Hey, look, a bullet. Now I can test what I want to fit in it. Just make it cube. But yeah, and then I do a whole bunch of messing around. This is what Josh is talking about with the hidden geometry. I have stuff hidden everywhere. That's cool. Uh, MJC is wondering if we can start a GoFundMe. He says, uh, you know, I asked him if he has any designs. He goes, nope, don't have the money to even buy a caliper. I got my budget bill that I've been babying for the last five years and is now at respectable level. Hey, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's how I started following the hobby is I had a, let's see, it was a gateway with a uh, Pentium 2 350 processor that I eventually upgraded to a whopping 64 megabytes of RAM. And I just fell in love with drooling over everyone else's designs and figured out how to uh, get better airflow, how to do the cable management and all of that stuff that made that gateway case a pretty rocking little box before I got another case. I think it was the Zacer 2 was the uh, first one that I actually built in. And Here's a good example of why SketchUp is nice because if you were buying this case off the shelf, even though you couldn't buy this case off the shelf, you want to see how you're going to stick a radiator in it. Well, here we actually can see about the tubing. How is the tubing going to work? And we can mm -hmm. quickly make changes. Put it on the outside if we wanted to. Oh, did it crash on me? No, I didn't. Just wanted to save an auto save. I don't really know which is going to work. Yeah, being being able to do the instant access flips like that. 
definitely a uh, handy trick. I got two of those cards That's in the shop. My special edition nitro that I designed that they didn't end up using exactly right. Mm. Oh, the Dibbit? Dibbit version? My version is slightly different. Though they did use a lot of it, which I was kind of happy to see. That's cool you're doing design work for them now. No wonder why their stuff looks so much better. Oh, thank you, Bill. That's so nice of you. Weren't you... Weren't... <laughs> <laughs> They had, um, what was it, a card from like two years ago. Somebody asked me if I could um, come up with a um, some type, type of vibration dampening washer because apparently one of their reference cards uh, was notorious for uh, making a buzzing sound, vibration buzzing sound, the fan shroud on it. it just, Which one was that? Uh, I'd have to look it up. Uh, but it was a big deal, though. Uh, there was a lot of people that were complaining about it. There was like um, one of the uh, screws that held the fan. It was it was a triple fan one, and I think there were eighty millimeter fans. And uh, kind of a while one of the um, the bra yeah one of the brackets um, wasn't very good at dampening vibration. Yeah, I've been really happy with their uh, nitro line so far. Oh yeah, it's great. Start making some really quality stuff. Yeah. The high-end cards that are always really nice because they use a lot of metal in it. It's always fun to get a card back and uh, for a part that was designed in plastic, but have it be like cast aluminum. That always makes me happy. Okay, I'm on my layout here. Now I got to do something hard. I got to choose a water block and route those cables. And building the tubing is hard, but that's why we're watching this. I guess it'd be more fun. Should I skin it first? No, let's, let's make the cables. Flex the tubing. tubing or hardline? Flex tubing, man. What's hardline? What's, what is that? Oh, that's that right. That's that old stuff. stuff. Yeah, the flex is a new stuff that just came out last yeah, year. I think that's right. Let's find a water block. I'm actually going to be using... I don't know which one I'm going to be using yet. Something from Heat Killer. Thanks to your introduction, Bill. Uh, he killer, yeah, Jacob, yeah, great stuff. Uh, Watercool.de in Germany, yeah. Uh, Eel calls it the uh, McLaren of liquid cooling components. Open is read only. This is hopefully the wrong uh, Eel isn't floating around on his living room couch in Florida. <laughs> too too soon. <laughs> I, I know. I'm going to do something that I should have done a long time ago. Paste this. I'm going to save my work for when SketchUp crashes. So Jacques is in the chat. Uh, Jacques, who uh, at times will moderate our Thursday live stream of a case. Uh, and he asks, so is there an advantage to SketchUp, just join, sorry, versus AutoCAD that I'm versed in already? Jack, <laughs> <laughs> stay where you are. You're all right. <laughs> You're all right, man. No, SketchUp, it's it's free, and there's uh, PC components that already exist out there you can download for free if you want to, like, preliminary plan a layout and a build and just kind of play around. Um, so... And uh, MJC says, check out Blender as well. Uh, MJC, did you uh, do you have some designs that you've done in Blender that we can look at somewhere? Or you can join us and share live. Um, and maybe uh, one of us will you know, put a GoFundMe together for a caliper and maybe some other basic tools. I don't know where I want my ports to be. This is an Intel. I know this is an Intel water block, and we're using an AMD socket. Well, I'm using an, an Intel socket on an AMD motherboard picture with an Intel water block because we can do that. 
the magic of SketchUp. This model is one I downloaded from the internet, and it's it's too big. I think that we're going to have to rotate it. Flexible copper piping and get the best of both worlds. Yeah, the problem with quote unquote <laughs> flexible <laughs> copper is it flexes what twice before it splits. Yeah, I mean if you're a distillery theme build, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I call this project moonshining. <laughs> there you go. That's not a bad idea for a theme build, though. A distillery slash uh, liquid cool build. Yeah. We got to get tubing from here to there. And this is something that SketchUp's really bad at. But AutoCAD already has a feature called wiring, mm -hmm. which is really, really awesome. This part's going to be touch and go. People are digging your design, Josh. They're tuning in. Well, if they get the pitchforks polished, let me know ahead of time, all right? Give me a head start. <laughs> no, we like it. <laughs> uh, steampunk would be fun with flexible copper. Um, somebody um, on Facebook asked me about uh, doing a stainless steel uh, tubing that build. would be something. Um, I used all stainless lines for my Jeep, and it was like the hardest thing to bend in the world. Oh, my goodness gracious. And I don't think you could bend anything with a computer radius. It's so hard. No. no. Hard. Moss will agree, both, both of us. Well, I did in my master case build. Right. I did stainless lines, and I've got a box of oopses and mistakes, the learning curve. Um, and you're right. You can't get a tight enough radius for a a, a piece that you know the space of a PC case you know it's it's tough you got to be inventive and use some 90 degree fittings but that case is probably one of my favorites that you've done color scheme especially yeah uh the, the whole pastel thing I'm beautiful I'm, yeah I'm, I'm loving it it's just a it's a refreshing change than red green black or silver you know or blue um the uh, I've been brainstorming ideas. I got to do a, a Blade Runner twenty forty nine theme, and uh, there isn't a lot of art work for the movie online. But uh, one of the themes that's carried through from the original Blade Runner and the new Blade Runner and the artwork is like the neon whoa, colors. Whoa. Well, did you spill? <laughs> you spill new something. Blade Runner. New Blade Runner. Yeah, new Blade Runner. You didn't know that. You've been Remake spending Bible too much time in SketchUp. Um, well, Ridley did approve it. He's behind. He's producing it. So, you really? know, there's a little hope. He made uh, three of my favorite movies of all time, and the rest of them are all really, really bad. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. <laughs> Let's not get into that. <laughs> Let's save that for another episode. <laughs> um, Josh, you've never done a movie theme build. Mm -mm. That's your that's your thing. I'm yeah, not good enough. Go on. <laughs> I can only arrange parts. <laughs> oh, this is this part is bad. Okay, so to make these, I made little circles over my fittings. I gotta kind of figure out how I want them to go. Oh boy. This is something that I'd like to see somebody good at SketchUp do. I usually skip this part. <laughs> this <is> the most <laughs> important part. <laughs> uh, I usually only get so far, and then it's just like, eh, good enough, I've got room, I'll figure it out when I get there. You are watching live SketchUp demonstration by Josh from NFC Systems. Um, we are now over the 60-minute mark for the Hangout. So, Thanks for giving me a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> and now he is laying in the first potential line for the water cooling. This is going to take like three hours. <laughs> Um, we got a lot of people drop into the chat now, though. 
All right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be really lazy and just show how to do this, but not do it perfect. Yeah, that's the method is more important at this point. OK, so I want to go from here to there, how you do it. Connect the dots. We'll just connect the dots. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Martin's digging this. He's like, do not end. I want to see how he does this. OK, the hard part now, see I got this little thing going on? Well, I mean, it really just it really just messed up. So what you have to say, boy, that one took off on you. Yeah, it <laughs> does that is you really have to keep cleaning it up. I'm just going to get it somewhat in this realm of existence. In this world. <laughs> yeah, in this world. I'm going to use a circle. This actually is the technique, by the way, that I, I found to do it. It just this is going to be sloppy. Because SketchUp cannot figure out how to deal with two points on a different plane. It just goes, it just, it hates it. OK, and then we're going to go from here. Yeah, and here. what you were just doing, the open space drawing is really tough. A lot of times, I just end up like, I'll make a big, giant rectangle. And then I'll put a bunch of points on there, and then I'll just delete the rectangle. That way, I at least make sure that everything stays on the same plane. I want to go out from here because otherwise it's not really realistic. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go down. We're almost done. MJC says his tubing would have been done already in Blender. And it would have been done already in AutoCAD. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Say that. He's worried that all of us anti Blenders are coming out to uh, take him down. Blender is really awesome. But what happens if you make something and you want to make get it made? That's my challenge. Mm, good question. MJC, if you design something in Blender, what do you do to actually get it made? OK, good enough for government work. And you need to calm down. All right. So now we're going to take this point, go out, and we're going to use the Follow Me tool, which is going to crash SketchUp. So first, <laughs> first we save. <laughs> and then you hope that it actually does it right and doesn't like oh, crease won't do it right. itself. And <laughs> oh, it won't do it right. I always love that when you use the follow me tool and all of a sudden something just decided to invert on you and you're like, oh, that's, that's yes. fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, MJC says export to STL. Oops. Does it have to be a camping in a group? Is that the thing that's going on right now? Yeah. I don't think it'll let you do groups. I mean, maybe as long as it's all in the same group, but they all have to be at the same group level, I think. Hey. Ta-da. <laughs> Roughly-ish. This is the worst tube I've ever seen in my life. Especially because you're going to end up coming in sideways to that port, but whatever. I could have made, <laughs> made it in stainless steel tubing easier <laughs> by hand. It looks good, though. This is, this is the part that takes forever when I end up doing this in SketchUp. It's about as long as it takes to bend the real deal. <laughs> I'm going to uh, texture my model while you guys in the program. It was terrible. <laughs> nah, dude, this is looking a lot better than anything I could have done, that's for sure. So, Bill, we're uh, leaving next week's topic as a mystery for now. <sighs> I blame Moss. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Um, yeah, it's going to be a surprise. I. Eh? We have to confirm something before we can commit to it, this idea I have. Bamboo. Um, oh, no, that's not bamboo. It's <laughs> just flooring. <laughs> Although Josh has used like some crazy uh, purple heart he's used. 
Purple Heart Wood uh, from is African, right? Yeah, I'm going to use Jaboda next, I think, for my next for this Cool, one. man. That's similarly obnoxious. I think it just burns slightly less. <laughs> I got some that I'm dying to use up, but it's going to be really, really rough. I'm not going to cut it with my tooling because I'd break everything that I have. <laughs> Are you going to make somebody else ruin all their stuff? Yes, absolutely. My next one here, who's been saying, I'll help you cut it. I'm like, yeah, you will help me cut it. <laughs> I... Uh... So I made a little like string Christmas tree thing, and for the trunk, I used a small piece of Jatoba, and I ended up having to resaw it, which I did by hand. And I swear I should have resharpened my saw halfway through that, and it was only like a piece that was maybe three inches wide that I was ripping over like maybe five inches long. I was just like, this is ridiculous, and then I planed some of it on like across the end grain and it just chewed the crap out of my plane blade. I was like, holy crap, this stuff is hard. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Where's the um is it called patterns? Yeah. Here we go. We can go get Yeah, I don't like oh, they changed all the names on me. We can go. That's way too little. Where <laughs> is it? Too, it's too there big. You go. <laughs> Forty ish, maybe fifty-five. Yeah. I'm gonna be carbon fiber. Oh, okay. This part will be painted. Maybe I can like just make it rusty and brush it a little bit. That could be fun. And see, this is the part that I would waste all my time on. I'd get a base model together and go, ooh, I can make stuff happen now. <laughs> Actually, that is something that I like doing a lot, especially when I'm using like contrasting woods, just to kind of get an idea for, you know, if I have something that I stain red, how's that going to look with this maple? Or, you know, just mess around with color combinations. Actually, I have, I could share again, I have... One that I remembered that I came across again that was something like, um, here we go. Let me share that. Screen share. I'm sorry, I missed this. Do those actually pivot it back and forth or just decoration? Or? They, um, they're decoration, but I found some Tyron ends I want to use. I think it'd look really cool. Oh, cool. Josh. If anything, you should do is a Jeep theme. I couldn't do it justice. It would be breaking all the time. It'd be rusty. It wouldn't turn on. And then <laughs> <laughs> who's going to sponsor that? I mean, <laughs> I I was driving down the road in my Jeep um, on my way home, making great time, you know, 20 miles an hour. And uh, my Jeep caught on fire. It caught on fire. I had to pull over. And there was a, oh, there's a homeless guy, and he's walking. And my Jeep's on fire. I'm underneath it, getting the, the electrical cords cut out. It's just, it's awful. And he said, it's going to be a tough day, buddy. I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty Wait, bad. What, what <laughs> caused the fire? Um, I had wired temporarily a CB radio for to talk to somebody, and um, the grounding got loose. Oh, my oh. gosh. Yeah, and those things, um, well, you, you, they carry kind of a load, and... Yeah. I ended up melting some stuff. <laughs> wow, I've never heard that. Well, I, uh, not quite a, a CB setup, but I had a friend who uh, lifted himself installing a radio for somebody else while the other guy was driving. He was stripping wires with his teeth. Mm. Usually wow. I just put the battery first, but you know, sometimes you're in a pinch. <laughs> 100 amps, you know, that's not scary. <laughs> what is Moss got up on his screen? This is what we were we were talking about just messing around with different like make something and then you just mess around with all the different textures and colors and all that kind of stuff. That's what this one was. I had literally just copied the same case what nine times and messed around with different combinations of woods and like oaks and walnuts and mahogany and maple and it's all the same case. It's all just Yeah, this is a familiar shape now too. It's kind of weird cuz this was do you remember way back, Bill, when you first made that frozen CPU tech bench and you were 
teasing us with the idea of making a billet motherboard tray that people could buy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just going to go ahead and blame you for why I didn't build this case because that's what this was that was for. Oh. oh. Well, there's always tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, don't worry, Moss. I mean, just add it to my to-do list. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Some dimensions and whatnot. Yeah. That is pretty I've, sweet, though. I've built quite a few SketchUp models of various things and all kinds of things that have never really been built. Probably never will be. Yeah, see? That one is even labeled Billet Mobo Tray. Boogles McGee says, is that a Victorian case? Uh, sort of. Kind of craftsman style theme, too. Actually, let me grab in here. It should be the. Um, but do, 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 do. By Let's the way, um, Josh, the somehow the guys in the chat know about another NDA. They're wondering. They said, okay, one NDA has been broken. What about the other one you mentioned? <laughs> I'm breaking in maybe right now. Okay. How about this? How about this to everybody? Uh this there's another NDA we alluded to. Uh, Josh is not going to show, but Josh, when you're ready to reveal it, will you come back to the hangout? I will absolutely. I would show you guys now, but uh you No. It's on the internet. Save so. it for the future. It's worth <laughs> waiting for the future. So yeah, this is Moss's actual Victorian theme build that he did, but like two years ago? Uh, I believe so, yeah. I mean, there's always some tweaks and changes. Well, isn't there, but... Moss, don't we have, do I have a video of it, or do you have a video of it? Was it one of my vlogs? Yeah, it was in one of my vlogs, wasn't it? Could have been. I know Visible Contrast was. I can't remember if this one was or not. I don't remember which vlog it was, though. Maybe it's in the title. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Because that ended up being this one. Ooh, so many pictures. Because you can never have enough pictures. If it'll decide to play nice. Not on my normal computer, so I don't know how the internet is on this one. Too much carbon fiber. <laughs> so we're going to have to close up the hangout here. I'm sorry, everybody. It was fun. Uh, Josh, is there? Could you share us? The share us, boy. I just made that one word. Share us. Share with us the uh, final design. Before we do that, here's here's the pictures Moss found of his Victorian Ooh. theme. Oops. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so some things changed, but other than that, it's largely the same as what the SketchUp ended up being. Yeah, we shared that in one of I know now we shared it in one of my vlogs. I just don't remember which number it was. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So oh wow. Okay, there's the final rendering of Josh's build that he's been sharing stages with us. And will this be revealed at a public event in the future? Um, I'm just going to do a video of me building it. Oh, okay. Josh, you play guitar, don't you? No, I just make them. <laughs> My brother is a really, really good guitar artist. So. For some reason, I thought of, I had this vision of uh, like electric guitar resting on the backside of that. <laughs> okay, so what is this wood we're looking at? It's pretty cool. I don't remember the name of it. Maybe I'm... Modskito can help me out, but this is what was donated to make the computer. Hmm. It was $130 for four feet. I would guess it'd be some flavor of rosewood, whether it's, you know, I mean, well, rosewood is tough to get, but things like, I had uh, a box that I made for a friend was made out of something called Coca Bolo, which is a dark red wood. I don't know if I'm still sharing or not. I don't think I am. Do, do, do. And that's a very 
very expensive wood. Um, I pay. I ended up paying a hundred and well, it was one hundred and thirteen dollars after shipping for six pieces of this veneer, and the veneer only covered two of these panels, which is roughly thirteen inches long and ten inches wide. It's just some of these woods are just ridiculous. Mm. All right. Well, we're going to have to close out, everybody. Uh, thanks again for watching with us. And, Mosh, thank you for joining us there. Um, so if you want to, like, just get your feet wet for free right away, sketch up, make. And if you're really enthralled and motivated, check out Fusion 360 and Blender. And um, share with us what you do with it uh, at any time you can just go to the mod Zoo community forums and we'd be curious to see uh, what kind of creations you make so in closing we've uh, I mean the process you saw Josh go through you know you, you just can go out to several online resources fit everything together screw around with it and uh, it, it's meant to be to you know get your feet wet and have that spatial awareness of how everything's going to look before you actually start to build. That's mostly how we use it in the hobby. So what we want to see is, as Bill said, share with us, you know, create stuff, get us those files. If you want to get those finished renders like Josh was showing off earlier and bring them to the forum, we love to see all of the work in process. We also love to dive in if you're having some difficulty, you want to get some suggestions as to how you want to get that last little clean fit put together to make it look the best. We you know, always willing to dive in and help out with that. So um, once again, the monzu.com slash forums. And until next week, when we decide that we're going to reveal exactly what we're going to be talking about, get out there, find something that's pissing you off and mod it. Would you have a good one?